Welcome back to Naturalis and Planet Zoo, where today we're going to be building a common wombat habitat. Now, before we actually get started, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you want to see more. Now, let the chaos begin. All right, so this is the fourth wombat habitat I've made in just Naturalis. Because we had the first wombat habitat, then I renovated that habitat, which then, of course, became the second wombat habitat. Then I moved the common wombat habitat, so that's common wombat habitat the dirt, and that one got deleted in the hard drive failure. The dark chaos period where a lot of things were lost. So now I'm rebuilding the third habitat and we're ending up with the fourth wombat habitat. I like my wombats, but building four habitats for them in one zoo is... yeah, that's the limit. If, if the wombat have that for any reason now is lost, then I will just consider the wombats cursed. And we're not going to have wombats in Naturalis. But yeah, I'm, ma I'm making sure that like I've made the uh, safe house like a backup. Not on the hard drive, because we all know what happened to the hard drive the last time. I thought I had a backup on the hard drive, but then the hard drive failed and the clouds for some reason didn't pick up the safes. So yeah, now I have a backup on another drive. Hopefully the wombats don't get lost again. <laughs> but anyways, the main complaint I had with the wombat habitat number three was it was really closed off. I had the same critique of the, I want to say Japanese macaque. I've been building in the Asian highlands again. It's really scary because it's just like such a uh, difficult style to build in but because of that i now have only asian animals in my head so it's just like oh yeah japanese macaque no it's the capuchin monkeys but yeah the capuchin monkey out that i had the same critique of that one and i opened it up more and here i have the same critique of like yeah the wombat habitat is really close off you have a perfect view of the habitat from the elevated walkway or the promenade that goes through the entire Australia slash Oceania area. Any other area or any other side is just really closed off. Where you're at only this little corner as soon as you came off the promenade where you could see the one mat. So I pushed the living area or like the building for the one mats completely to the penguin habitat. I don't know why I didn't do this before because it also made so that there was, well, with the previous habitat, there was this empty area, this sort of nook between the wombat habitat and the penguin habitat or the building for the penguin habitat, the little blue penguin. There was this little nook, which was sort of a dead corner. I didn't know what to do with it. But now that I have pushed the wombat building completely to the king penguin habitat, it actually fixes that. There's no dead space anymore. So yeah, I don't know why I didn't do that before, but now I did and I'm very happy with it. Now the remaining bits of the habitat, I mean, it's completely closed in. So like the boundaries, like the fences and such, it's already completely set because all of the roads are already laid out. And that's usually how I approach habitat building. I lay out the roads first. Knowing that I make all of like custom fences and that's also a great tip if you want to like get more creative with your habitat is to start trying to build custom fences. One, animals can't break them. So even if you're in franchise mode, having custom fences, even if it's just a line of rocks, the animals won't be able to break out of them. Two, it just forces you to build a little, little more creatively, but also for me, at least, it makes it really easy to make habitats because it's like, oh yeah, I can already lay out the shape. I don't have to like build it on a complete empty canvas because the pots are already there. And then it's just building custom fences and such. I now realize that I probably made no sense there, but that's any time I try to sound slightly informational or educational. It's just like, yeah, here's some garbled noise. Try and make a sentence out of that. Because my brain is just like, yeah, you're not programmed to be educational, poison. You're programmed to be chaos. But anyway, so back to the actual habitat. 
So as I said, I couldn't really change much when it came to like the layout of the habitats. Like I could shove the building to one side, but the remaining parts of the habitat were already completely set in stone, literally because of all of the parting and such. So then it was just like, all right, how can I make this habitat a bit more unique than the last time? And then I realized I completely forgot what the original habitat looked like. And this is kind of a good thing because the Wombat habitat is not supposed to be like a really in your face habitat. It's really just supposed to be like, oh yeah, this is a habitat that you pass by. Now, in this time, I decided to make it a little bit more unique. And for a longer period of time, this is why I'm now building the roof. I did not know how to make this unique. I was just like, all right, I want to do something with the walls, not something with the roofs because the roofs are just going to be the standard, just flat black roof. What can I do to make the walls interesting? And then I just uh, went around it, started doing a little bit of terrain work. I basically just did everything to just go around actually facing what I needed to do. Which you will see in multiple videos where usually I edit it in such a way of like, oh yeah, now it all seems cohesive. I built the building and I finished the building and then I moved on to something else. Usually the habitat comes last because I've realized I will spend hours on a building. The habitat will be finished in one hour, maybe even 30 minutes. I don't know what it is with like the plants and the rocks or something, but I just get on a sort of everything starts making sense and i just go full balls to the wall just immediately just like oh yeah this needs to happen there this needs to happen there this needs to happen there whereas when it comes to building the actual building it's just like um yeah this is uh going to be a thing don't know why because usually the building is the one that before i start building i have like the most thought of i have like oh yeah i want to make it look like this and i make it want to make it look like this but for some reason the motivation doesn't stick with me and then i just uh usually i can focus myself but sometimes it's just like yeah let's quickly do this other thing here such as terrain work or do the fences or something here it was just like, uh, yeah, we're going to do that. And uh, we're going to worry about the building later. Sometimes it's just also, especially now, because I'm building a lot. I've already finished uh, the next build, which you might have already seen because I'm really proud of it. And so I showed it off everywhere because if I'm proud of something, I will shove it in your face. I am not humble about it then. I was just like, yeah, I want to show this build off. So yeah, I've already finished the next build. So maybe that's also a reason of like, oh yeah, I just finished the kangaroo build. Not the kangaroo, the wallaby build. We're going to eventually move to the kangaroo build. But the kangaroos will be sharing their habitat with emus, which means it's a big one. And I first wanted to do some small habitats. But because I've been building so much in so little time lately, maybe that's why my brain was just a little bit exhausted of building buildings. Which for some reason doesn't do anything to me when it comes to building the actual habitats and doing all of the plants and such. Because then I just get on a sort of plant high. Yeah, I'm not actually high or drunk when I'm making these voiceovers. Even though it may sometimes sound like it. I This is just chaotic poison. Anyways, then I figured out, alright, what am I going to do with the walls? To make this habitat a little bit more unique. And... Then I just don't know actually where I got this idea. Probably from Pinterest somewhere, but it's also a wicker basket. <laughs> I just, a lot of things in the Australian area are just going to be, uh, yeah, I think of this as like a wicker basket or something woven, something like that. I mean, it's a unique style and I'm probably not going to use it in like the African area or the Australian, the well, Australian area we are building there. This is again an example of chaotic brain poison where he can't keep a single train of thoughts, even if he's in the middle of that train of thoughts. But like, this is a style that I'm not going to use anywhere else in Naturalis. So works out well. It's organic. It's that has that little bit, 
yeah organic vibe a little bit of like uh i don't know if you would call this aboriginal style but it is slightly inspired by uh, like the huts and such that you will find if you look up aboriginal style little bit like teeniest tiny bit but anyways now it was just trying to make these things blend making sure that there's enough space for like the door to the habitat for the door for the wombats to get into their indoor section now i did think oh yeah wombats are going are they going to be like too cold in the netherlands probably not because the wet netherlands has been quite warm i don't i think it's been like five years since we lost that snow but also wombats temperature wise actually go very well in the netherlands so i didn't have to make a really big indoor section so i could keep that really small and then also have like their burrowing could also still be outside because their burrow is of course going to be warmer just because it's underground and such and because the wombats are in there probably also being basically a little movable i wanted to say refrigerator <laughs> That's not the right word. Refrigerator keeps things cold. What was the word actually again? The little uh, heating thing. What is it called? Uh, I forgot the word for it. Probably will like come back to me as soon as I finish recording this voiceover because uh, that's just how things happen. Usually I'm a complete dumbass in the voiceover and then as soon as I stop I'm just like oh yeah. That's the word. Why did I forget that? Oh, and the word was radiator. That's it. <laughs> it's close to refrigerator, just word style. It's the complete opposite of its function because, again, refrigerator keeps things cold. Radiator makes things warm. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, yeah, then I moved on to the actual habitat now that the building is mostly done. I need still need to do interior and some little extra bits because I also wanted to have, like air conditioning and like cooling and heating because of course you need to heat the building and such but that's like the nice thing of having the flat roofs you can just shove that all on the roof without any issue so after that i finally was just like yeah now i can work on the actual have that and this is where my brain goes haywire and it just the building it was multiple building sessions building the actual have that is just I start building and I don't stop until I'm finished and I have no idea why it's so peaceful for me like this is the same as like you have those like really satisfying videos of like sand or something where they're supposed to be really satisfying for me the equivalent of that in plan 2 is just building the actual habitat because it's just so satisfying for me to like build they have that place all of the rocks, place all of the grass. It's a lot of grass building, but my brain is just really zen throughout it. I will then be looking at the clock and just be like, yeah, I spent 30 minutes just placing grass. Doesn't feel like 30 minutes. It feels like five minutes because it goes really fast. And then I will complain about it in the voiceover, but it's just, it's weirdly tranquil. It's really peaceful for me for some reason. And that's like maybe also a reason why it just goes so fast. Like the entire dingo habitat, the wallaby habitat, all of those outdoor sections, all of the habitats itself were built really fast. It also of course helps because the Australia section is now two thirds done because there's still the big indoor building with where the platypus is going to be, the quakas. I also am thinking of like having an indoor section or indoor area for the crocodiles because the crocodiles wouldn't really be outside during like winter and such so they need also an indoor area so naturalis is weirdly going to then have two crocodile or saltwater crocodile habitats maybe i will just move the male crocodile to the indoor habitats because he's also huge and has problems with the outdoor habitat because he keeps getting stuck at the door. I guess you have to move him further into the habitat, then everything is fine. As soon as he just gets boxed up, because occasionally animals in Naturalis will just get boxed up. 
not because I want them to be boxed up, but because like some of like the bad finding of the animal just freaks out and then they box them up. It usually happens to the armor leopards. Don't know why. They have a lot of just easy walking space, but they constantly get boxed up. So I, like every five episodes, I have to just go through the entirety of Naturalis and check, oh, are these animals boxed? Yes. And it's usually the crocodiles and the armor leopards. Funny enough, I thought it would be the capuchin monkeys who would constantly get boxed up. Uh, no, they have been boxed up once. But at least with the capuchin monkeys, I am just kind of like, yeah, that's going to happen. It's like the climbing thing. That's going to freak out occasionally. I will just have to just unbox them. And I have no reason for like, why are the armor leopards getting boxed up? And like even the crocodiles, I understand like the male one is just huge and can't get out of some areas and then it gets boxed anyways back to the actual habitats that we're building now because now i'm building fences yeah i finished the entire habitat like all of the plants and everything the trees very similar to the last common wombat habitat that i made especially when looking at the trees because i think the trees are in the exact same position but here's again the thing yeah, that's going to happen because I usually build a habitat not to remove it. So I will try to find like the best spots for trees. And then it's just like, yeah, the next time, like those are the best spots for trees. I, it's going to happen. But I think we're now, like the only thing that we have remaining of like the dark period where we lost a lot of habitats is the lion habitat. Now I am thinking of not building a lion habitat in its original place and built another habitat there. Just to not have that issue where it's going to be like, oh yeah, this is 80, 70% similar to the original habitat. Also because the lion habitat took so much time. I'm like really happy with it, but it was huge. And I did a lot. It had a waterfall, it had a playground, it had a big staff area or at least like a square it, it was huge so yeah might have a different animal there i'm i really want to weirdly build for meerkats i've not built for them yet i've removed them i still have them in like the trading stuff like where all of the animals that you bought are i still have meerkats there so i could be building for the meerkats and I am looking for like shorter or smaller builds. This is a prime example of it. The next build was going to be small. Then I realized these animals are nocturnal and need a larger indoor space. I have not planned for that. So how the hell am I going to make this work? And then it's also like, oh yeah, this is an entrance area. So it needs to be kind of in your face. And uh, yeah, this is usually what happens when I'm building. I'm like, oh yeah, I want to build a small build because, you know, I want to kind of stockpile videos. Not the coming week, but the week after I start work. And I know for like the first three weeks, so for the first month, it's going to be just complete chaos because you're like settling in at work. So it's going to be a little bit... Uh, Pretty much I probably won't have a lot of energy after work to build stuff. And then, of course, IRL life is also a thing. So I don't want to dedicate every minute of free time to Planet Zoo. So I know like, oh yeah, the first three weeks, the first month is going to be hectic. So I want to have videos prepared for that. And so I've been kind of looking for smaller builds now. This one is a prime example of that. The next one was supposed to be an example of that, but that didn't work out for you, did it, Poison? And meerkats are a small animal. So yeah, we might be just like dipping around naturalist for a bit. <laughs> with me looking for small habitats and then making them huge. At least with this habitat, I can say it's small. I originally thought like, oh yeah, because like I've learned different styles or different techniques now with the habitat itself that come the wombats are going to have so much space well they have enough space but it's not as much as i thought and here's another thing when it comes to like me building habitats i usually way overshoot the space that the habitat needs because i know with the rocks the plants the trees and everything that i built that space will usually be halved so that's how i'm like figuring out like oh yeah this 
habitat needs this or this animal needs this amount of space. Double that because then I can go completely wild with the plants and the animals will still be happy in their habitat. Which isn't really a requirement <laughs> because it's sandbox mode and you can just turn their needs off. If you want to go fully realistic, you usually aren't building the size habitats that the game wants you to make. Especially when it comes to like some of the smaller animals like meerkats and such. Those need tiny habitats. But the game doesn't want that because of course the game is also a bit about conservation and making sure that your animals have like, you know, the best habitats when it comes to how much space, all of the enrichment and all of that. And then you will go to a real life zoo and think, yeah, Planet Zoo would just completely lose its shit when it saw this habitat because it's too small. Or maybe it won't because in real life, animals are a lot smarter and are not stuck of like, oh yeah, there's a tiny rock in this place. I can't move here. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, then now we're doing just some extra bits. So I wanted to make like a, I don't know how you call these things, but I'm just going to call it an electrical closet where you have like all of the electrical stuff for like the lights in this area where you have like fuses and all of that stuff because I mean there's not going to be much to do in the indoor area here there's like of course the area for the wombats but then there's always an area where the staff like walks around if they want to like check on the wombats like they don't open the door and are immediately in the area for the wombats there's usually a fence there still but that gave me like a little bit of space of like oh yeah a little bit of a closet here for like food or other things that they need of course some boxes with food or other stuff they need then there's the electrical closet then there is also the air conditioning because they need to keep this habitat or at least the indoor section up to temperature or cool it down in the summer or warm it up in winter and it just I like building these things but usually when it comes to what I built the roofs are a little bit um, funky so usually I can't really build these things like air conditioning units and all of the stuff because the roofs I would have to very much modify them so this is like the fun thing of like building flat roofs for me it's just like oh I can go haywire with this I can have like all of these air conditioning units I can have solar panels I can have like a green roof go completely haywire like usually or at least before in the early days of Nartras I really didn't give a fuck about the roof I was just like yeah this is a flat black roof and that's it maybe it has some plans because I do like my green roofs now I'm just like I want air conditioning units I want all of these like pipes and such I want all of it but then you built a roof that's a little bit finicky and then it's just like, yeah, I really want to build that stuff. But I also don't have the patience to like, oh yeah, this is a angled roof with multiple beams that are basically sort of making the roof. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of stuff. Anyways, that's going to be it for today's video. Don't forget to hit the like button if you liked the video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you want to see more. There's also channel memberships if you want to see videos early, especially now that I am stockpiling videos and I haven't figured out yet how to schedule it so that it becomes available to members. So you might have a video a week early at that point, maybe even multiple weeks because I'm a dumbass. But then there's also emotes that you get access to with the memberships. And then that's it. I hope all of you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.